Hello. Today I'm going to demonstrate the phase transition of uh, liquid water changing to gaseous water using this uh, plastic syringe. It's a 60 milliliter uh, plastic syringe. It, it comes with a little cap and it can be obtained at most uh, medical supply uh, stores. Um, if you cap it, of course, um, you can't open the syringe very easily. In there I have a vacuum and if I pull real hard you can hear the air rush in when I open it all the way. It's not perfectly frictionless so that if I were to have some air in there and push in the pressure, as I'm pushing in the pressure on the inside uh, will be a little less than the pressure on the outside. As it is expanding, the pressure on the inside will be a little bit greater than the pressure on the outside because of the friction. Um, I'm going to um, place about two milliliters of, of water in this syringe, or maybe five milliliters, good measure. And uh, get there's some always some air bubbles that are hard to get rid of, but get the air bubbles out. And <clears throat> now I'm going to place it in the microwave oven. And in doing this shouldn't be done by children, obviously, and uh, uh, good care must be taken to avoid uh, getting scalded by the water. Keep an eye on the syringe. As the uh, syringe, the water in the syringe heats up, it will uh, increase in temperature and eventually reach 100 degrees Celsius where it will start to boil and change to gaseous water and push back on the syringe and open up the syringe as it makes the transition from a liquid to a gas. Um, because of friction, the pressure on the inside will be somewhat greater than the pressure on the outside as it expands and then it as it cools, the reverse process will happen. There will be a little bit of a difference in pressure between inside and outside as it's condensing because of uh, friction. But uh, that's not anything to keep concerned. You won't be able to see it in the microwave, unfortunately. I can see it, but uh, it takes a little while for the water to heat up to boiling. Not very long. And I'll tell you when I see the syringe uh, plunger expand. Now it's expanding fairly rapidly. It's about 50, 50, 60. It's pretty much fully expanded. All right, now I'm going to quickly take it out. And you can see as it condenses back to a liquid, um, the volume decreases. All right, this illustrates the large difference between the molar volume of a liquid and the molar volume of a gas. Um, there's a little bit of air in here. I'm going to uncap it. And now you may have noticed that as it was condensing there were some bubbles forming and I believe that that's because um, <clears throat> because of the friction the pressure on the inside was somewhat less than the pressure on the outside. The pressure on the outside is one atmosphere. If the liquid is under is at the boiling point at, at 100 degrees and the pressure is less than one atmosphere uh, it, it will actually be boiling as it is condensing. It's kind of strange, but that's what I believe is happening. Let's try it again. It'll expand very rapidly now because it's already pretty hot. It's starting to expand 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Okay, and let's check it out. You can see the bubbles <laughs> uh, because there's an equal, unequal pressure between inside and out as it's condensing. But this is a nice demonstration to illustrate the um, change of liquid water to a gas and the reverse process, the change of gaseous water to a liquid. It has relevance to a steam engine, as you can imagine, and uh, it's a, a very nice demonstration. Obviously, it should only be done by adults with some experience. Uh, due care should be used. And uh, I hope you'll find this demonstration useful for those of you who are teachers in illustrating the phase transition of liquid water to gaseous water and gaseous water back to liquid water.
Thank you for your attention, and I'll see you next time.